Ryback was another huge deal uh, during the uh, mid 2010. Oh shit. <laughs> oh, I didn't know this was going to be in the video. Oh no. <laughs> Here we go, man. Oh my god, bro. All right, man. <laughs> Let's see what happens here. I'm <laughs> Bro, there better not. There should be no type of beef coming from this. I'm literally just checking out the video. I didn't even know this was going to be in the video. Truthfully, bro. Oh, my God. Let's get into it. Fuck it. We here now. What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross. Back at again with another video. So I want to check out wrestlers that WWE wants you to forget now there are some wrestlers and situations that these wrestlers found themselves in whether it was controversial or whether you know well most of the time it is controversial um that wwe um they tried to i guess you can say make you forget that they were even in the company involved in the company because they they want to try to distance themselves Depending on how serious, you know, the, you know, either accusation or whatever happened, you know, what type of controversy that wrestler was found in, it depends on how serious it is. They'll try to essentially pretend you never existed, even though there's matches of you being in the company. So we're going to check out some of the instances. Uh, this video is by uh, Ring Rivals. Let me make myself smaller so y'all can see what I'm talking about. Uh, I can, I still can't see. <laughs> Hold on, let me uh, make myself disappear real quick. Boom, Ring Rivals. Make sure you go subscribe to them, check them out. And uh, let's see some of these wrestlers that WWE wants us to essentially forget. WWE has a huge history with count. Stop the recording. I made sure the video. Okay, it just skipped. I didn't do that, y'all. <laughs> that was weird. And iconic superstars. However, when a wrestler gets involved in any real life oh, controversy no. or leaves the company on a bitter note, WWE is quick to move them to the alumni selection. With that being said, let's mm -hmm. take a look at these figures that WWE would prefer fans to forget. Yeah. Let's kick things with Jimmy Snuka. Mm -hmm. Back in the 80s, Snuka made waves in the squared circle. Whether it was diving off the steel cage or being a part of the first ever WrestleMania, he certainly managed to prove himself as an elite performer over the years. Mm -hmm. In 1996, he was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame, but not without some eyebrows being raised. To put it into context, just a year after his debut in 1982, Jimmy was considered the prime suspect in the mm -hmm. death of his then-girlfriend, Nancy Argentino. In May 1983, the 23-year-old died due to traumatic brain injuries and was injured 12 to 24 hours before the call for the ambulance. Jeez. Moreover, she had suffered a number of cuts and bruises, and the coroner mentioned that there were some signs that foul play had taken place. Given the fact that Snuka was the last person who saw Argentino alive, he was initially questioned by police, but was not formally charged. Mm -hmm. It was also rumored that Vince McMahon did everything possible to get Snuka, one of the biggest stars of that time, off the hook. And it wouldn't be until 32 years later, in 2015, when justice was served as Snuka was arrested and charged with third-degree murder and involuntary manslaughter. Although his lawyers argued that he was declared unfit to stand trial due to dementia and his advanced age. Meanwhile, as soon as Jimmy Snuka's name was all over the news, this time WWE decided to cut their ties with. Of course. The promotion not only removed him from their official website, but also from the Hall of Fame section. Mm -hmm. In the fall of 2016, Snuka's attorney notified the court that his client was given six months to live due to a terminal illness, and thus the homicide charges were dismissed. He passed away in 2017 mm -hmm. due to terminal illness. Although WWE paid him a tribute, they have largely distanced themselves from him and even stopped using his daughter Tamina's last name on screen. Yeah. Next up on our list. And it's crazy when you really think about it. Like, I can somewhat believe the fact that definitely Vince was doing everything he could to kind of keep him, you know, going going to jail. Because obviously, you know, he's probably he's making Vince some money. People were paying to see him. So I could see that being the case. He may have 
you know, had some type of suspicions of Jimmy, you know, being involved in it, but he wanted his guy to be there to make some money. I, that sounds so plausible, too. So, is Enzo Amore. Oh, when man. Enzo Amore made his debut several years ago, no one could match the real one on the mic. He Alongside was the guy. His tag team partner. He was the guy. Pass, the duo quickly became an extremely popular tag team in NXT. Oh my God, bro. Enzo and Big Cass continued to make big waves after their main roster debut the night after WrestleMania, receiving a thunderous ovation. However, as quickly as Enzo Amore and Big Cass rose to popularity, they soon fell off both professionally and personally. Mm -hmm. By 2017, Big Cass had turned on Enzo in one of the most disappointing tag team splits of all time. So soon stupid. after... Big Cass was out of action, and Enzo was sent to 205 Live, eventually becoming the cruiserweight champion. It was said too. that Enzo wasn't happy about his on-screen split with Big Cass. Of course. And never hid his feelings backstage. At one, Because that was dumb. I don't care what nobody say. They were the... Uh, they should have been tagged, multi-time tag team champs. They were over. They were the hottest tag... I want y'all to understand. Think of... the. Before Jimmy and Jay really got to where they were, you know, with the bloodline and stuff, they were a good tag team. But, you know, before they really got to that point, think of a tag team in that era, in that time period, that was really that over. Outside of the New Day and what they were doing with them, but they were over from the jump. It took time for people to get with the New Day stuff. And the same thing with Jimmy and Jay to, to get to the point where they were like super over and the crowd really, you know, you know, was wanting to see them. It, the last time I could really remember the tag team being that prominent where people were paying money just to see the tag teams like Jeff and Hardy, uh, the Dudley boys, obviously edge and Christian, you know, tag teams that people, you know, really wanted to care about because of the charisma and stuff. And Enzo and big cash, you hadn't seen that. They were just already over as soon as they got on the main roster. They already had a uh, crazy catchphrase that worked, got people involved, and people wanted to see them succeed. I just, for the life of me, I don't know why they split them up. That was one of the dumbest things they could have ever did. That was dumb. That was really dumb. Point. I don't care what nobody Things had gotten so bad that the certified G was even kicked out of a tour bus by Roman Reigns. Mm -hmm. But the final straw about for that Enzo arrived on the eve of the Raw 25 episode, where Enzo's failure to disclose to WWE that he was yep. the subject of an ongoing sexual investigation just hours before Raw 25 led to his release. In May 2018, yep. the Phoenix Police Department closed the case due to insufficient evidence and no charges were filed. By that time, WWE was clearly done with him and didn't rehire him in an instant. He should have disclosed it. He should have said something, and they could have got ahead of it, and maybe they would have did something. Maybe had him off TV, waited until everything cleared up, and then maybe they could have brought him back. But also, he wasn't really liked much backstage. That, too. So when you're not liked much backstage, on top of having some serious allegations being sent your way, they're going to cut ties with you. It's easier for them to cut ties with you. That's just how it is. Instant. But the certified G took it a step further and hijacked Survivor Series yep, 2018 this. by appearing in the crowd, only to be tossed out of the arena by security. Yep. Moving on to someone you've probably forgotten, Lars mm -hmm. Sullivan. There was a time when WWE wanted Sullivan to have a WrestleMania feud with John Cena. <laughs> Crazy, huh? Even a showdown with Brock Lesnar. Crazy, huh? However, these potential plans were dashed when his image as a racist and homophobic, yep. along with inappropriate comments about Stephanie McMahon, yep. became public knowledge. GGs. But before all such accusations, Sullivan had a promising beginning in NXT. He quickly stood out due to his imposing presence and dominated his opponents. Clearly, Vince McMahon liked what he saw and brought him to the main roster in of 2019. Course. Upon his arrival at the main roster, he was truly a force to be reckoned with. But just weeks after he made his debut, Sullivan's old social media posts surfaced, revealing racist, sexist, and homophobic comments made by him years earlier. Although WWE fined him $100,000 and he issued a public apology, it was still awkward to keep promoting someone who had even made derogatory remarks about Stephanie McMahon in the past. 
Another controversy arose when it was revealed that Sullivan had appeared in adult films prior to his wrestling career, a fact he had failed to disclose to WWE. I didn't know Just that. Sullivan's career was already uncertain. He was hit with a... Hey, yo, I definitely didn't know that, bro. That's crazy. That's crazy. The internet never forgets, bro. That's fucking wild. Veer knee injury, sidelining him for six to nine months, but the injury took more than a year to heal. Ooh. Nonetheless, Sullivan returned on the main roster during 2020 October's draft, eventually landing on SmackDown. His first couple of appearances involved nothing more than beating up anyone who got in Sullivan's way. But just days after he made his comeback, more problematic screenshots that appear to feature comments from Sullivan had appeared. While these new screenshots don't feature any racist remarks, they do appear to show Sullivan sending a woman inappropriate DMs. Once again, the timing couldn't have been worse for him. And Sullivan, once again, silently disappeared from TV. Damn, WWE, I didn't know this hand, either. Released him from the company just a few months later. There's no doubt that Sullivan's real-life troubles and lack of direction played a part in his release, and now he's truly a forgettable figure. Yeah. Over the course of her career, the fabulous Moolah was regarded as a trailblazer and someone who was instrumental in putting women's wrestling on the map, paving the way for legends like China, Trish Stratus, Becky Lynch, and Charlotte Flair decades later. By the time fabulous Moolah had passed away in 2007, she left behind a legacy of holding the women's championship mm -hmm. for an unprecedented 28 years. What? However, after That's her passing, crazy, bro. her reputation was tarnished when it was revealed that she had exploited several women wrestlers, mm -hmm. both financially and sexually. During this phase of Moolah's career, she would feed and house her trainees and wrestlers. Some women Moolah booked and trained recounted stories of the property being locked down by a certain time, and if you weren't home in time, you would be left out until morning. Jeanine That's Miyosa, wild. who started her wrestling career with Moolah, had this to say about her. The fabulous Moolah was a real-life heel. A lot of women paid to train at her school and then went out on the road. They risked life and limb in their matches, and she repaid them with the worst kinds of abuses. She skimmed their money, ignored women who were badly hurt, and pimped women out to creepy men. She was not a mother figure. Damn. She was more like Kaylee, the Indian goddess of destruction. I met her in my early 20s, and I had never met such a monstrous person. Yeah. However, the decision sparked a backlash, and even those who had just heard whispers and rumors about her exploitation were outraged to learn of the horrible things Moolah did throughout her career. This led WWE to rename the event as the WrestleMania Women's Battle, Battle Royal. Royal yep. In the end, paying homage to a woman who got away with such terrible actions really made WWE look bad and they have actively kept their distance from Moolah since then yep. and would rather have everyone forget about her. Yep. <laughs> Many stars on our list are responsible for their own downfall, but few have ended up in jail like Sonny. Mm. Due to We've how seen a video she about this too. For negative reasons. Many fans forget that Sonny was one of the most successful WWE managers back in the 90s. Sonny would have roles ring announcing, hosting, commentating, and everything in between to have a consistent role on television. The popularity of the guys love them some Sunny. <laughs> Sunny grew to saw her becoming the most downloaded woman in 1996. That's crazy. However, when Sable arrived in WWE in 1998, she quickly eclipsed Sunny in uh -huh. terms of popularity. 1998 was also the year when Sunny was released from WWE due to substance abuse, a poor backstage reputation, and frequent no shows at events. Her ongoing issues with alcohol and substance issues led to multiple arrests and legal problems over the years. Although she was inducted into the 2011 Hall of Fame and appeared healthier than she had in a long time, her troubles didn't end there. Over the next several years, yeah. Sonny was arrested for DUI, burglary, and making terroristic threats. And whenever she wasn't in trouble with the law, she was giving interviews about all the wrestlers she had slept with. But Sonny's self destruction tragically ended up costing a life yeah in march 2022 tammy sitch was involved in a car crash by driving into the back of another vehicle where the 75 year old man passed away from his injuries 
In November 2023, Sitch was sentenced to 17 years in prison. Even though WWE has distanced themselves from her for many years, they have yet to remove her name from their Hall of Fame list. Although he is now on friendly... And that's, that's crazy, man, when you really think about it. The fall from grace, you know, drugs, substance abuse, that can really play a part in it. It can ruin your life. It, it, it ruins a lot of people's lives, honestly. Um, and it's just very unfortunate that, you know, her condition and the things that she was doing to her body and the state she was in, an innocent person died out of it. An innocent person's life was taken out of it because of her bad decisions. And it's unfortunate, man. So, yeah, makes sense. They would distance her, themselves. I'm surprised she is still on the WWE Hall of Fame page and stuff. But, you know. I don't know. I don't even know about that one. Someone definitely should have been like, hey, we may we may need to remove her. Or maybe they don't even care enough to think about removing her, but I don't know. Early terms with the company. There was a brief period when Hulk Hogan's entire presence was erased by WWE. Yep. There's no ambiguity that Hogan was instrumental in turning WWE into the biggest pro wrestling promotion in the world. He was the face of WWE for years, headlining countless WrestleManias and winning numerous championships along the way. However, outside the ring, Hogan was nothing like his superhero in-ring character. He repeatedly engaged in backstage politics to benefit what? his own career what? and constantly told outrageous lies on the public stage. Yep. But the lowest point for Hogan's career came He's in still July doing 2015 it. <laughs> when a controversial tape was released in yep. which he was heard making racist remarks. Yep. The controversy immediately tarnished Hogan's legacy. Meanwhile, WWE took immediate action and removed all references to Hogan from their official website. They terminated his Legends contract mm -hmm. and even removed him from the Hall of Fame website. For the next few years, it truly felt like Hulk Hogan would never be seen or mentioned in WWE again until 2018. After yeah. a period of reflection and public apologies, Hogan was reinstated into the Hall of Fame and made his return at the 2018 Crown Jewel event. Money, money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's all I got to say, bro. And here's the thing. I'm not going to be a person that sits up there and say someone doesn't deserve a second chance. You know, I'm, I'm not going to be that person because I've said things. I've done things that aren't, aren't good. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not proud of. And all I can do is, you know, ask for forgiveness for the things that I've done, you know, and, uh, you know, learn to be better. So I'm not going to ever sit up here and say, Someone shouldn't be forgiven, but at the same time, we knew this was going to happen. I, I, come on, bro. Come on, dog. Vince was not passing up no money, money. Yeah, yeah. And not bring Hulk Hogan back. It was just going to wait for things to die down and then bring him right back in. Are we surprised? You shouldn't have. I wouldn't. While he was eventually reinstated, it hasn't changed the fan perspective on him. And Hogan still often receives very mixed reactions whenever he appears to this day. Yeah. Even though he remains the only man to win the Royal Rumble, Money in the Bank, and the WWE Championship all in one calendar year. That's crazy when you think about it. Doors will never open again for Alberto Del Rio in WWE. Following his debut in 2010 as a wealthy aristocrat with a personal announcer, he had soon captured the WWE Championship twice and the World Heavyweight Championship. Mm -hmm. But in just a few years, Del Rio's name would make headlines not for his in-ring work, but for his real-life troubles, from cheating on his wife to physically abusing his girlfriend. In 2014, Del Rio was released from WWE following an altercation with a WWE employee who allegedly made a racist remark, and although he made a comeback the following year, even defeating John Cena in his return match, he was again let go in 2016, this time for violating the wellness policy. Around this time, Del Rio's high-profile relationship with former Divas mm -hmm. champion Paige was also controversial, considering that he had allegedly cheated on his wife to be with her, and Paige later accused Del Rio of abusing her. But the tipping point came in 2020 when Del Rio was arrested on charges of sexual assault and kidnapping. Mm. Though the charges were eventually dropped, Del Rio continued to attract negative attention by making disparaging remarks about Paige in various interviews. Yeah. All this public scrutiny has ensured that Del Rio may never return to WWE 
and now he's nothing more than a thing of the past. <laughs> Ryback was another huge deal uh, during the uh, mid-2010. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, I didn't know this was going to be in the video. Oh, no. <laughs> Here we go, man. Oh, my God, bro. All right, man. <laughs> Let's see what happens here. I'm... <laughs> Bro, they're better not. There should be no type of beef coming from this. I'm literally just checking out the video. I didn't even know this was going to be in the video. Truthfully, bro. Oh, my God. Let's get into it. Fuck it. We here now. He made his debut as a member of Nexus <laughs> and one of the most memorable debuts of all time. However... Since the group had more popular members like Wade Barrett and Daniel Bryan, Ryback was always in the background. Plus, he was better known as Skip Sheffield back then, <laughs> but that all changed in 2012. Oh After disappearing for over a year due to a broken ankle, he came back repackaged as Ryback and quickly became a fan favorite due to his feed me more catchphrase. He was. His chiseled physique and a short undefeated streak were quite reminiscent of Goldberg's rise in WCW. It was. When his time with WWE ended in 2016, he had become a one-time intercontinental champion, but never truly reached his full potential. Since 2016, Ryback has done little but lash out at WWE and criticize almost every wrestler. Some of his most outlandish statements include calling John Cena a poison to the wrestling industry, claiming he could manhandle Brock Lesnar, labeling Triple H a disappointment after the cerebral assassin announced his retirement, and publicly criticizing Vince McMahon right after McMahon's mother passed away. These are just the tip of the iceberg of all the things Ryback has blatantly spoken out about since leaving WWE. While he was never destined to be one of the all-time greats, he did achieve a level of success. While everyone loves a great comeback story, WWE would rather have Ryback remain a long forgotten figure among fans. Another wrestler WWE hoped fans would eventually. Oh, man. <laughs> See, that wasn't too bad, man. All I'm saying is, there better not be no beef coming from that, bro. <laughs> no beef should come from that fucking clip, bro. We'll see. We'll see, bro. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to keep the peace, man. I'm I'm doing my thing. He doing his thing. I'm going to leave it at that. We <laughs> forget up until Survivor Series oh 2023 my God. is CM Punk. Mm -hmm. The decade-long rivalry between CM Punk and WWE has been well documented. Long before he left the promotion, Punk famously expressed his grievances and criticized the higher-ups in his iconic pipe bomb promo, mm, which shook the WWE promo, fans to its core. However, by SummerSlam 2011, WWE had botched the Summer of Punk, which had <laughs> left Punk bitter. Fast Definitely forward botched to it. January 2014, and by this time, Punk was suffering the effects of the WWE lifestyle. He was hurt, and his body was banged up. During the 2014 Royal Rumble match, Punk sustained a concussion. And following the event, Punk had finally walked out of WWE. Although it was easy to label him as entitled and brash, Punk's interview on Colt Cabana's podcast, where he revealed he was fired on his wedding day, quickly garnered him support. Following his departure, years of WWE shows saw fans chant CM Punk, Punk whenever they were dissatisfied with something, whether it was a boring match or a promo. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, WWE had begun erasing Punk's history with the company, such as removing his name from their official website and avoiding acknowledging anything related to him for a long time, including his historic 434-day-long WWE championship reign. For instance, WWE would only acknowledge Edge and The Miz as the two stars who successfully cashed in yeah. their money in the bank contract. That's crazy twice. when you think about it. They made no reference to Punk who achieved the same feat in 2008 and 2009. Nonetheless, nearly a decade later, CM Punk and Triple H were able to reconcile, leading Punk's historic return nearly 10 years after his departure in his hometown. Classic return. At one point, 
there wasn't a faster rising superstar in NXT than the Velveteen Dream. Yep. The former NXT North American champion became a mainstay starting in 2017 and quickly developed into one of the best stars in the promotion. And it seemed it would be only a matter of time before he would be called up to the main roster. Yep. However, in April 2020, Velveteen Dream was hit with accusations of sending explicit pictures of himself to underage boys on Instagram. Then in June, he was exposed again as part of the Tiger Speaking Out movement, facing further accusations of sending pictures to underage girls and grooming underage boys on social media. Dream Not firmly denied look, these allegations in a tweet, stating, Be assured I did not communicate inappropriately with anyone. A private photo of mine was shared without my consent or knowledge, and I am working with a third party to look into this matter. However, the moment these allegations surfaced, it practically meant that Velveteen Dream's career was in jeopardy. Yeah. And the longer it took for these charges to be resolved, the more guilty he appeared. By May 2021, Velveteen Dream was released from WWE. And while the company did not publicly state the reasons for his release, you can the tell. negative attention surrounding him was widely believed to have played a huge role. Yeah. Despite not being re-signed elsewhere, Dream remained in the headlines for the wrong reasons. In the fall of 2022, he actively campaigned to return to WWE, but again faced new accusations this time by EC3, someone he shared an NXT locker room with. During an interview with Sports Kita, EC3 claimed he once discovered Dream filming other wrestlers as they used the bathroom during a party at his house. Whoa. He left his phone in my bathroom with the camera on trying to capture people taking pisses. He further said, What I did was I took the phone, I stopped the recording, I made sure the video was deleted because that was happening in my home. Velveteen Dream's troubles continued in Damn. August 2022 Whoa. when he was arrested twice in just one week once for trespassing, and again for possession of drugs. Oh, Even though any last major allegation against Velveteen Dream surfaced nearly two years ago, it has been reported that WWE has no interest in ever re-signing him, and things will likely remain that way. There's oh, he was a freaky freak, bro. What the fuck, bro? What type of weird shit is that? Oh. Hell no, nah, bro. You got to go. Get the fuck up out of my crib. Hell no. Nah. Delete that footage and get the fuck up out of here, bro. Go. Get out of here. Don't ever come back. That's There's perhaps weird. no controversial character during the ruthless aggression era as infamous as Muhammad Hassan. From the moment he made his debut as an Arab American who talked about the discrimination he faced after 9-11, he quickly became one of WWE's top heels. The intense heat surrounding him stemmed from the fact that there was, indeed, significant real-life animosity toward yeah. Arabs in the early 2000s. It was. With the iron clearly hot on his back, it was rumored that Hassan was set to face Batista at SummerSlam 2005 and become the youngest world champion in WWE history. However, his run with the company abruptly ended following one of the most disturbing segments in SmackDown history. Yeah. In July 2005, Muhammad Hassan was embroiled in a feud with The Undertaker. In one of their segments, Hassan orchestrated an attack on The Undertaker with a group of masked men. However, the segment had aired just days after the London bombings, which featured imagery that many felt resembled a terrorist attack. Yeah. As one might expect, the timing and content of the segment triggered widespread backlash from the media, fans, and even politicians. As a result, UPN Network demanded WWE remove Hassan's character, marking the abrupt end of his time in WWE. <laughs> Jesus, Ultimately, bruh. Muhammad Hassan was nothing but a doomed character, one of the most dramatic falls in wrestling history for a guy who wasn't at fault. Yeah. As we reach the end of our list- It wasn't even his fault, essentially. He was just out there doing his job. It was just the timing of them doing that. They should have been a little bit more aware. Like, hey, we probably shouldn't air this segment. If they don't air that segment at that time, he probably still would have been in the company. So it's really fucked up. It's not even his fault. But the network's like, you got to get rid of him. 
He cannot be on television. He can't be seen on television no more. I was like, damn, bro. He only they he got screwed over for doing his job. That's the fucked up part about it. List. There is no wrestler in history that WWE has gone to greater lengths to erase from their promotion and the minds of fans than yeah. Chris Benoit. Before the events of June 2007, Chris Benoit was often hailed as one of the greatest technical wrestlers of all time, if not the greatest. Mm -hmm. The pinnacle of Benoit's career came at WrestleMania 20, Classic where he moment. won the World Heavyweight Championship in a historic triple threat match against Triple H and Shawn Michaels. Great match. But sadly, just three years later, Benoit's life and legacy were forever tarnished by a series of horrific actions. After Benoit no-showed the 2007 Vengeance 2007, a welfare check was conducted at his home only to discover that Chris Benoit, his wife Nancy, and their son Daniel were found dead. It took no time for investigators to suspect that Chris Benoit had acted alone in committing the crime. <sighs> Prior to knowing the show. details, WWE dedicated a three-hour Raw to his career. By the next day, when it became clear that Benoit was the culprit, Vince McMahon made a statement on live television. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Last night on Monday Night Raw, the WWE presented a special tribute show recognizing the career of Chris Benoit. However, now some 26 hours later, the facts of this horrific tragedy are now apparent. Therefore, other than my comments, there will be no mention of Mr. Benoit's name tonight. Mm -hmm. Vince McMahon meant his words, and Benoit's presence was effectively erased from WWE history. Yep. His 2004 Royal Rumble win was removed, and a namesake battle royal was covered up as if it had not happened. Yep. Benoit's wins and achievements were buried and never mentioned again in company tapings, even nearly 16 years after the tragedy. What do you think about today's video? This was a good one, man. This was definitely a good one. But it makes sense. They will never mention him again. I don't think they should, honestly. I know some there's some of y'all out there that's still like, oh, you should still be able No. No. No, 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 no. We know for those who was able to watch him, we know what he was able to do. We've seen the clips. I mean, the clips are still out there. You can find them if you really want to, to watch some of his matches. But as a business, there's no way you still talk about someone that killed their family. Despite whatever mental state he was going through, his family died. They killed, he killed them. And it's all tragic. But they didn't have a say-so in their lives being taken. They didn't have no say-so in that. So it's kind of hard to still try to remember someone and, and prop up their legacy when the last thing they did was kind of heinous. Not even kind of heinous, was heinous. So it's very unfortunate, but this was a very interesting list. Comment down below. Let me know some other wrestlers y'all know that uh, WWE would definitely steer clear of mentioning ever again if they weren't list, uh, listed on this video. I appreciate all love support. Bro250K, appreciate y'all kicking it with me. See y'all on the next one. Peace.